Councilmember Scott Irwin and the Pledge of Allegiance by Councilmember Jeffrey. Can you please stand? Please bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful fall day that you have given us. We thank you for each person, Lord, who took the time to come to this council meeting today. Lord, we, we pray for all of those in our community who are sick or those who may be adversely affected by the pandemic. We pray for uh, solutions to come their way. Lord, we, we pray for our wisdom for our nation, for our state, and for us as we go about the city's business today in this meeting. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Just join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Mr. Montgomery? Here. Mr. Smith? Here. Mr. Irwin? Here. Mr. Darden? Here. Mr. Williams? Here. Mr. Free? Here. Mr. Maggio? Here. All present? Council in accordance with Louisiana Open Meetings Law and the adopted Bossier City Council meeting rules resolution, the City Council asks for order and decorum at our meetings. Please silence your cell phones. Anyone wishing to address the Council on any agenda item? may approach and state their name and address for the record and shall be permitted three minutes to make their comments on the particular item that's up for discussion with up to four speakers per side. All other audience members are asked to please observe the meeting quietly and if there is a need for audience members to hold a conversation or take a phone call, you're asked to please step out of the meeting. City Council appointed Sergeant at Arms have been instructed to maintain decorum and ask anyone in violation to step out of the meeting in order to maintain orderly conduct of the meeting. We will adhere to John Bell Edwards mass mandate in accordance with John Bell Edwards COVID-19 mandates. Anyone in the council chambers other than those actively speaking must wear a mask that covers both your nose and your mouth. All right, council will approve the minutes. Of the October 5th meeting. So moved. Second. Any questions from the audience? From the council? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Council, there are no additions or deletions from the agenda today. Ceremonial matters and I need a motion to approve the agenda. Oh, I'm please. sorry. So moved. Second. Any questions, council? Any questions from the audience? Please cast your vote. Motion carries. All right. Uh, we have some ceremonial matters today. Chief Estes. Mr. President, Mr. Councilman Smith, Councilman Montgomery, would you mind coming down as well? Thank you. I would like to take this opportunity to commend Sergeant Lowe, Officer Hunt, and Officer Turner, as well as Officer Sol Solter for their actions on September the 23rd, 2021 in apprehending a suspect involved in several armed robberies. On September the 23rd, the Smokos gas station located at 1930 Airline Drive was robbed by a male with a handgun driving a small vehicle that was silver in color. The vehicle was seen leaving the crime southbound on Airline Drive. Officer Hunt observed the suspect southbound on Barksdale Boulevard and attempted to initiate a traffic stop. The suspect failed to yield, leading officers on a lengthy vehicle pursuit. This pursuit ended in Northwest Shreveport when the suspect lost control of his vehicle and crashed into a light pole. The suspect was taken into custody without further incident. It was later determined that the suspect stole and um, was driving a stolen vehicle, which was driven by a 17-year-old male. The juvenile was armed um, and also involved in a armed robbery that occurred in Arlington, Texas. And he was supposed to be a suspect in an armed robbery that occurred at the Shed Road Mini Mart in Bossier City. During the pursuit, the Bossier City police officers maintained a calm demeanor, clearly and concisely communicated with each other in headquarters, and exercised all the means possible not to place any citizens in danger 
Their actions demonstrated the, the determination of all Bossier City police officers to keep the citizens of Bossier safe in their homes and places of businesses by aggressively yet safely pursuing wanted criminals. The actions of these officers involved reflect highly of the courage that each of them display on a daily basis whenever they put on their uniform and go to work serving our community. I also would like to take a moment to commend Detective Hampson as well as Detective Warren for their actions on September the 25th, 2021. On September the 24th, 2021, an individual decided he was gonna prey upon three of our local businesses by robbing these establishments at gunpoint. Detective Hampson and Detective Warren were a part of a contingency of officers who were called upon to conduct surveillance and apprehend the individual who made the decision to victimize our businesses within Bossier City. Detective Hampson and Detective Warren took it upon themselves to go above and beyond the call of duty and began conducting their investigation early. Detective Hampson and Detective Warren had identified the suspect in these robberies prior to the rest of the group reporting for duty. Detective Hampson and Warren were able to secure a search warrant for the suspect's home as well as his vehicle. Detective Hampson and Warren's relentless pursuit of this individual ultimately led to the recovery of the handgun used as well as the clothing and money taken during these robberies. These actions taken by Detective Hampson and Warren demonstrate their dedication to the citizens of Bossier City as well as their skills as investigators. Furthermore, these officers standing behind me represent the all men and women of the Bossier City Police Department. The members of the Bossier City Police Department want to see, send a clear message to those who choose to victimize our citizens, our businesses. That message is the members of the Bossier City Police Department will relentlessly pursue you and use every resource available to apprehend you if you choose to commit crime in Bossier. Thank you, Council, for allowing me to recognize these gentlemen before you here today. Guys, we all know that we, we've, we always support the, the Bowser City Police Department and everything uh, the Chief would like to do. And I just want to thank these guys on behalf of all the council for what you do every day. Thank, thank you, you. I'd like to say I looked this statistic up earlier. Uh, the uh, national average for solving armed robbery cases is at 29%. Um, this week we so, we we uh, solved 100% of those, and so that just shows y'all's hard work and dedication. And on behalf of the council, I thank you for your hard work. Yes, thank you. Say their names. Yes, sir. If y'all would step up, please. Yeah, the council yeah, would yeah. like to know your names. So we'll know who you are. I'm Officer, Officer Danny Turner. Officer Robert Salter. Officer Dion Hunt. Detective Jason Warren. Detective Hampson. That's uh, Sergeant Jason Lowe. Thank you so much. Opening of sealed bids for bid number 21 1304 704 Yarborough Street demolition. Good afternoon, Council. Uh, this structure was recommended for demolition at the September 14, 2021 Administrative Core meeting. There is no addendums. 
Our first bid is from 3Gen Construction LLC. It's for $9,415. That's 9415.00. And their bid bond is included. Our next one is from Pulley Construction Inc. is for twelve thousand six hundred dollars. That's one two six zero zero point zero zero. Their bid bond is included. Our last bid is from Red Tail Contracting LLC. And it is for eight thousand four hundred and fifty-eight dollars. That's eight four five eight point zero zero bid bonus included. I ask that you accept the reading of the bids. So moved. Second. <clears throat> Any questions from the council? Any questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Unfinished business. Adopt an ordinance recognizing the attached list of <coughs> Bossier City Marshal vehicles surplus to the needs of the city of Bossier City. Final reading. So moved. Second. Any questions from the audience? Any questions from the council? Please cast your vote. Tell us I don't have bearings. Motion carries. Adopt an ordinance to reappropriate six thousand dollars from Fund Four Nine Seven, the twenty seventeen sales tax bond innovation drive, to contract with Neil Schaefer Inc. to provide a speed study along Swan Lake Road between US Highway eighty and Modica Lot Road. Final reading. So moved. Second. <clears throat> Any questions from the audience? <clears throat> Any question from the council? Please cast your vote. Motion carries. Adopt an ordinance to reappropriate twenty-one thousand dollars from the fund four nine seven. I'm sorry, we just did. No, that's the same. I always got confused on that. I'm sorry. Adopt an ordinance to reappropriate twenty-one thousand dollars from fund four nine seven, the twenty seventeen sales tax bond innovation drive to contract with Civil Design Group LLC to provide a traffic study for turn lanes located on the Barksdale Boulevard to Violent Avenue. Final reading. So moved. Second. <clears throat> Any questions from the audience? Any questions from the <clears throat> council? Please cast your vote. Motion carries. Adopt an ordinance authorizing Mayor Thomas H. Chandler to execute the attached cooperative endeavor agreement between the City of Bossier City and the Louisiana Department of Treasury and the State of Louisiana. Final reading. So moved. Second. Second. Any questions from the audience? From the council. Please <coughs> your vote. Motion carries. Adopt an ordinance authorizing the City of Bossier City, State of Louisiana, to proceed with a not to exceed $125,000 financing through the Louisiana Local Governmental Facilities and Community Development Authority for the purpose of refunding certain bonds of the authority and providing for other matters in connection therewith. Final reading. So move. Second. <coughs> Phyllis, let me, oh, let me correct you. It was one, $125 million. I'm $125 million, I'm sorry. And it does <laughs> That's say all right. I just want to make sure million. you read it right. And who seconded that? <coughs> yes, sir. Bye. Council, any questions? Yeah, Mr. President, uh, I'd like to make a quick comment. Uh, uh, two weeks ago at our last meeting, uh, I just raised a few concerns and questions about this. Uh, I, still, I still hold those true. Uh, I think that there needs to be a uh, competitive bid process on this professional service. Uh, and over the last two weeks, I've kind of gone back and forth on this. Uh, I've, I've read here, uh, the 2018 uh, uh, Louisiana Legislative Auditor Report, uh, and on page seven, it specifically says that uh, we found that competitively bidding out services could potentially enable local governments to reduce their bond issuance costs by approximately 1.2 million. 
We surveyed local governments and found that only 38% of those who responded used competitive bidding to select bond issuance professionals. We then analyzed the differences in issuance costs between these two groups and found that local governments using competitive bidding obtained services at a lower cost. And so I just bring this up to say that um, I think that we would be doing the taxpayers um, a good service by at least opening the uh, door to possibly seeing, making sure we're getting the best deal. I want to be clear that I don't think we're getting um, a bad deal or ripped off by our current provider. Um, I, the fact of the matter is we don't know if we are because we haven't seen what other services um, would charge us uh, apples to apples to what we're getting now. So, uh, and then, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of, there's a lot of talk uh, amongst politicians from every level of government about being fiscally conservative. I think we have an opportunity to lead the state, um, be leaders in the state and saying that we will be fiscally conservative, we will uh, have a competitive process for these professional services um, to make sure that we are spending taxpayer money um, in the most efficient way possible. So um, I, will be, I will be voting no just on the premise of I think that we need to at least look at, um, make sure that we're getting a good deal and that we're spending taxpayer money appropriately. So that's my comment. And council, I'll uh, make a point. I, of course, made my comments known two weeks ago, and um, <clears throat> I will certainly provide the council with responses to uh, Mr. Smith's um, alleged uh, potential savings and, and respond to each of those that uh, he's noted previously and today. Um, also, if Mr. Smith would like to look at the past of what the council has done, um, which I will not bring up in public today, but it certainly, uh, he can do his research and the rest of the council can determine that we went through this process a couple of years ago. Um, I think Mr. Williams, Mr. Free, Mr. Irwin, Mr. Darby, remember that. And I think uh, Mr. Jacobs could probably provide um, the uh, process that we went through that was supposedly going to save money and get the same results. So uh, to your point, it has been attempted. It was uh, not successful um, and proved all the more so that sticking to a professional firm that charges a fair fee, which is allowed by state law, provides the, the best possible savings um, and revenue generation from sales tax revenue bonds in this case uh, for financing projects. Um, once again, I'll emphasize that through the years when you find a, a professional firm, whether it be accounting, uh, legal, in this case financing, you stick with them because uh, out there in the marketplace, just as they did four or five months ago, they came to us uh, relative to the water and sewer um, bonds that could be refinanced and saved a revenue stream of $1.1 million per year, I believe, for 21 years, uh, which in turn uh, on our debt service capital ratio, which is to be maintained at 1.2, prevented that from dropping below that number, which could then in turn cost the taxpayers more money through uh, raising rates on water and sewer. So when you have that kind of team working for you, looking out for you, because I certainly don't have the expertise um, to uh, go out and keep up with the marketplace in that sense and our in the the diversity of our financing obligations that we have so with that said um, I am totally in support of continuing with this firm that has proven their track record 
over the past 15 years and trust that they will continue to do the same. Thank you, Ms. Montgomery. <clears throat> Council, any more comments? Any comments from the public? Yes, sir. <laughs> Please state your name and address for the record. Uh, Mr. President and uh, council members, um, Dave Crockett, and I live at 653 Dumaine in Boulder City. Um, just a little bit of my background. I'm a retired Air Force colonel. I, uh, <clears throat> I led contracts, I ran contracts, I governed contracts, went through a lot of competitive bidding processes, and I absolutely believe in a competitive bidding process, regardless of whether you're going to pick the same person or not. Uh, I believe it's in the interest of the city because I think it becomes a part of the informed debate that we need to have over the cost of um, doing government in our city. <clears throat> and, I, and I have to give credit to, uh, I, I did some research after watching the last council meeting because I, I do believe pretty strongly in competing almost all contracts. But I went to the, Mr. Sadow's article, and what, I, what I'd like to do is throw out a, a few of the facts that he put out in the article, and I'd like to hear some sort of discussion about those kind of things. Um, he, he talked uh, briefly about, he, he quoted a $487 million uh, total debt for Bozier City. I don't know if that's true or not. He didn't, he didn't source that part of the ar article, but he did say that we have a 6,820. point of order, we're now discussing someone that is talking about something other than the refinancing of these bonds. Uh, I will argue that Pardon this me, is sir. Ms. I have the floor. Uh, okay. You, you just, you're stating an article that you said right. it was fact, but then you just said that you don't know if it's fact or not. So we just, let's, let's talk about just refinancing the bonds. Okay. And I'm, I'm asking about it because I think that the, the total debt per revenue is a part Again, of the discussion. Again, I'll speak yeah. to the point of order that we're speaking to refinancing these bonds. We're not talking about debt to per capita and the other allegations levied by the gentleman in the article. Uh, I, so why don't you tell me what the total debt is and tell me what the total revenue Mr. is Williams. and I'll do the math for you. Mr. Williams. If you'd like to, you can meet with our, uh, we've got a director of finance. Uh, I, why can't this be a part of the public discussion? That's one of my issues is why aren't we discussing the debt per capita, Mr. or not Jacobs, per capita. I will ask you as city attorney, as a point of order, the man is speaking to something that's not on the agenda. Well, I think we've gotten a little far afield. As the point of the agenda is a, <clears throat> is a vote concerning uh, an ordinance to refinance some existing sales tax revenue bonds. I think that what we're now discussing is the use of a firm or a service who navigates that process through the bond commission and then places the bonds with the investment bank. In my opinion, those are two separate issues. And, um, and, and there's nothing on the agenda that, um, that a resolution or otherwise that anybody has proposed to, to, to discuss that. And, I think Mr. Smith made his statement, explained why he was voting against it, but, and, um, but any discussion of that is not an item that's on the agenda. Well, now, I find this very interesting. The last time I came Again, before, I will, the, as a let, point of Mr. order, Montgomery, sir, can I make I have, a comment? Sir, I, I believe sir, I have three we minutes. are speaking to what's on the agenda. As, you as are well speaking, am I. this is not new financing. What you're talking about is an argument of debt and should we increase debt? We're not doing that right now. You Mr. are refining. Are you refinancing it for the same terms? Is the length of the debt Do the not, same? Mr. Williams. Mr. Crockett. Please Mr. just adhere what Mr. Montgomery and Mr. Williams. I, did, I just do not understand why Mr. Montgomery wants to shut down discussion when. Sir, it's a, this is a point of order. Mr. This Crockett, is in our. Please. You've Phyllis, heard from, you've heard from the city. Excuse me. Now listen, the last Phyllis, time I came sir, to this commit to this council, Mr. I raised an issue about what we were discussing about hiring somebody that went off the agenda. Mr. Crockett, please. Just okay. Well, let me look at what's in here that relates exactly to this. Um, I did find more information in the same uh, paper that was um, that was read from earlier. Uh, basically, they've said. 
in here that it is a best practice to compete these contracts. So I don't understand why, Mr. Montgomery, that you don't want to compete the contracts. And I think yeah. um, it's a point of order. Also, when, when you're that's that's just, exactly what we're doing right now. Competing, the, and that was the related to the discussion that you just had. Well, you, you're supposed to speak to the chair, not to each indi I, okay, individual. Okay, good. Thank so, you. But anyway, we're, we're off base. You've already had your three minutes. So I'm just asking you to please sit down. And if you'd like to talk with somebody afterwards to the director of finance, please do. Well, I, I firmly believe that these are the issues that the public is getting very frustrated about. Thank you. Any other comments? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carried. Adopt an ordinance <clears throat> authorizing the issuance of not exceeding $15 million of taxable public improvement sales tax refunding bonds and not exceeding $75 million of public improvement sales tax revenue bonds of the City of Bossier City, State of Louisiana, providing for the sale of such bonds and providing for other matters in connection therewith. Final reading. So moved. Second. Council, any questions? Any questions from the audience? Please cast your vote. Motion carries. Adopt an ordinance authorizing Mayor Thomas H. Chandler to execute the attached alcoholic beverage concession contract between the Bossier City Civic Center and Thrifty Liquor. Final reading. And this is the one that was continued the last council meeting. Yes, and uh, we haven't had a chance to, to visit, but uh, Mr. Jacobs. If I may address that, the, the contract was a renewal of an existing contract <laughs> between the Civic Center or the city and Thrifty Liquor. What it provides for is the, um, if any um, event um, uh, sponsor or host wishes to serve alcohol, then the contract would provide that it must go through <coughs> Thrifty Liquor. The idea being that Thrifty Liquor supplies the pro not only the product, the alcoholic beverage product, but also the trained personnel with the ABO cards, and most importantly, the liability insurance um, to, uh, to make sure that if there is a liability issue with the uh, supplying of alcohol at an event, uh, say an underage person is uh, served and goes out and you know runs over somebody and kills them, that, uh, that that provider, that we have sufficient insurance in order to protect the city. It is my understanding that Councilman Montgomery at the last meeting <coughs> wished to uh, have this contract um, you know, explore the possibility of uh, putting that out there, advertising it for bids. I think the, the proposed contract with Thr Thrifty is the same. They uh, provide the city with 30% of the gross sales. Um, so, but there was, I, I think, if correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Montgomery, but you also wanted to explore the possibility of food and beverage of food along with alcoholic beverages and maybe combine some of those services and things of that nature. Um, but we do have events that are upcoming um, and um, in order to advertise that, put that out there. So what I did was prepare a resolution to authorize the entering into a temporary contract for 90 days with the same terms and condition with Thrifty that would give the count so the city would be protected liability wise that would give and it would also give the council though the opportunity if they so desired to explore to see if there are any other providers um, of this service and whether their services would be basically more desirable that's a long way to get that rabbit back in the hole <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and to mr jacobs point um previous um uh, I believe the chief was overseeing the operation and refurbishment of the Civic Center, and we were going, going to look at getting, as you pointed out, a, both food and beverage provider for the Civic Center for all events and uh, package those together. And then the new 
Delta variant hit and everything was canceled again, so it kind of fell off the radar. So I'm certainly in favor of Mr. Jacobs' proposal myself for the 90-day extension that gives us time. I'm sorry? I was going to tell you, if y'all want to continue this one for 90 days, this ordinance for 90 days, at the very end of the meeting is the resolution to uh, approve the 90-day the temporary. Correct. Well, that I'll, make, I'll make a motion then to postpone this for 90 days. Postpone the actual contract, the full contract for 90 days. Yes. Is that what we need to do? Yes, sir. And then the temporary is the very last item on the agenda. All right. Then I second that. <clears throat> Charles, let me ask you a question. You said this is a renewal. How long, how many years have we re continued to renew it? I mean, it's been a long time. It's, uh, it, again, I have not been here nearly as long as, <laughs> as y'all have, but in my understanding, it's been a long time agreement. Um, I don't know the exact number of years. Um, the proposed contract, it looks like to me, it's been renewed every three years for, um, for a, a considerable period of time, I guess is the best way I could state that. I think it may have been going month to month for a while. <clears throat> I think it expired in August of 2021, mid-August of 2021. We just simply have the, – the reason it fell off the radar is that we haven't had yeah, very yeah. many events at the Civic Center, um, especially events that – where the event sponsor is uh, wishes to sell alcohol to the attendees. Council, do you have any, uh, any other questions? Uh, Mr. President, I wanted to, to ask, in the interim of the 90 days, um, may I ask the administration to share what steps are being taken to address the possibility of a uh, competitive vendor? Um, one of our first priorities is uh, filling the position of the executive director and so we want that to be something that that person can also be a part of um, but we are definitely looking at combining those services we think that could be um, beneficial for anyone that books through the Civic Center for various events so, so has that process started or is it in the work we have not begun that process yet okay so you're waiting until you get a new administrator over there? Right. We think that that would, we, we want to allow them to have some of that input as well as the, the okay. executive director. Thank you, Ms. Nottingham. Thank you. Any questions from the audience about this? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Adopt an ordinance authorizing Mayor Thomas H. Chandler to execute the attached sponsorships guide sign permit with DOTD listed as Exhibit A and appropriating funds not to exceed $15,600 from the Hotel Motel Taxes Fund for replacement of signs related relating to the Brookshire Grocery Arena. Final reading. So moved. Second. Second. Any, any other questions, Council? Any I just questions? want to yes, I'm go ahead, Ms. Montgomery. Hmm? Go ahead. Make the comment that this has been a long, arduous process, which a lot of folks don't know, and um, it's been quite difficult dealing with uh, DOTD. And uh, but I, I would just like to say, for the record, that um, we've agreed to. The terms of providing these signs and providing bonds and different types of insurance requirements um, but for the record I just want it to be known that the, the arena was previously named the CenturyLink arena and these signs were uh, provided for a privately a private company publicly traded and um, Brookshire certainly stepped up to the plate and we want to thank them for their 10-year commitment of roughly $420,000 a year, $4.2 million of assisting us in this process and we certainly have done everything within our means financially and uh, economically to provide these signs which 
they definitely deserve. And uh, anyway, that concludes my statement. Uh, any questions from the audience? Council, any other questions? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. New business. Introduce an ordinance to adopt the general fund budget for 2022. We're going to make a motion to combine? Yeah, you can go ahead and make a motion. Okay. I'd like to make the motion to combine 1 through 19. I'll second. second. Which, for uh, these are all parts of the budget individually, and uh, they're all provided uh, for public record so that anyone wishing to can go through each one of them. So, so son, you know we got another one. Shall we go ahead and make that now too? To I'm sorry, you have to you have to vote to combine to combine first. first. Combine, okay. combine, combine first. Yeah, motion in a second and you need to vote <clears> to <throat> combine first and then if you're gonna do anything else after that, then you can do that. Okay. Council, do you understand the motion? Just we're just gonna combine all these these different budgets. Is there any questions from the audience about this? Yes, I do. I'm a glutton for punishment. <laughs> Mike, <clears throat> what I'd like to do is as, as we go through the budget process in Bossier City, I'd like to see some discussion of the same issues I was talking about. These, the budget and the debt and the bond issue is directly related to debt per capita long-time servicing of bonds, whether we're gonna plan a sinking fund to be able to uh, pay for our debt, and what are the terms of the bonds. These are all related to our budget. So I'd like to see in the, I know this is not the final reading for the budget, we're gonna be going through this process, but I would like to see, and, and Mr. Montgomery, to your credit, you said in an article that you're gonna be requesting from our, uh, um, our construction management company, I can't remember what their name is, to have them look at how much we're gonna save in the out years on the, on the bond once we reissue, no which will help our debt, which will have, help our debt and our budget. So I'd like to see, see a public discussion because <clears throat> if Bossier is in fact one of the highest debt per income cities in Louisiana and the 10 largest cities, I believe we need to know that and we need to look at actions to reduce that debt in the out years, which does relate to our current budget. And thank you. Do you have any questions? Yes, this is just an introduction. We will in two more weeks. Right, and I, and I look forward to a part of being a part of an informed debate. I hope it becomes a debate. I mean, I will come with issues, and I'm, I'm talking to people in the community. These are issues that people have in the community. It's difficult for the community to come to these meetings because they're at 3 o'clock. I will come and I'll read. I'm retired. I, ha I have a <coughs> master's degree in public administration. I have a bachelor's in business. I have master's level economics. I'd love to work with the council. Mr. Montgomery, I'd love to work with you, but I, I would like to have a voice. May I say this to you, Mr. Crockett? Your, your insight and your interest is, is very appreciated, and I, and I appreciate you being here. I, I may suggest to you, as you speak to the council, Try not to identify one particular member of the council. I, I appreciate that. I'm pretty new at this. I've never really gotten involved with council. Most of my experiences with larger government, mm -hmm. uh, I have a good bit of experience with that. But I have I have a lot of experience and a lot of experience with contracts. But I appreciate it, uh, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you. All right, council, please cast your vote. Motion carries to combine. I'd like to make a motion to amend the sales tax capital improvement budget to remove vehicles from the public affairs and human resources. I had a lengthy discussion with uh, uh, Rodney today, this, this, this morning about it, and, and he agreed with me. So I'd like to take those two vehicles out from being purchased. Second. <clears throat> Council, we have any questions? You look like, like, like you got questions, Jeff. Any questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. We 
pop up, Council? No. Mm -hmm. There we go. Motion carries to amend the sales tax capital to remove the vehicles from public affairs and human resources. Yeah. I'd like to make a, another motion to introduce as amended to combine 2022 operating and capital budgets. Second. Any questions, Council? Any questions from the audience? Please cast your vote. It's still not popping up? There it is. It's Might be a little internet delay. Motion carries. And that's to introduce as amended the combined 2022 operating capital budgets. Yes. Introduce an ordinance to reappropriate $500,000 from the sales tax capital improvements funds for unplanned streets and drainage improvements. First reading. So moved. Second. Second. Third. Indeed. Council, any other questions? Well, I'd like if Mr. Rich, he can explain what we're doing here, but additionally for each district in the city equally. If all I don't know this, or our new public works director. Good afternoon, Council. Good afternoon. What we're doing here is um, we're continuing a program that's already in place. This will, this these funds will be divided up into all five districts equally. All five districts. This will allow us to continue our program already in place until the 2022 budget process is over, and we can begin that that program. I'm still kind of new at this, <clears throat> but this will, we're, we're about out of funds now in, the, in, this, fun, in this area, and I don't want to have to stop those projects until sometime around April when we get everything else <clears throat> bid out and contractors selected. We can just continue on with our current program. Yeah, you know, I think it's, I think it's a good deal because as Mr. Darby knows, I had to borrow $140,000, Mr. Darby's district money this year because I had a street that needed drainage and repaving. Correct. Would be no no sense in repaving it and not doing the drainage under it. So, uh, I've been in the I, process of, of kind of looking at, through these districts and yeah, I've still got a list on my on my list from this year that I, and I'd like to in, see everybody's so, list. Yeah. Uh, we and you know we, we plan on attacking them, and I, I just don't want that process to stop now until sometime in the spring because there's a lot of this work we can continue through the winter months. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'll sure get with you. So. Council, any questions? Any questions from the audience? Mm -hmm. Please cast your vote. Motion carries. Introduce an ordinance authorizing and improving the engagement of Heard McElroy and Vestral LLC to provide professional services to audit the financial statements of the City of Bossier City, Brookshire Grocery Arena Fund, Fireman's Pension and Relief Fund, and Policeman's Pension and Relief Fund. First reading. So moved. moved. Second. <clears throat> Council, any questions? Any questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Introduce an ordinance to approve change order number six for the Tinsley Park expansion project with an increase of $25,540.67 for a total contract price of $12,827,298.53 with an additional 75 days added to the contract. First read. So moved. Second. Any questions, Council? I just uh, wanted to. Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mr. Oh, we got. I, I just wanted to think. There's a several people uh, that were especially part of this. Co Co uh, Coach Bohannon and Lewis and uh, <coughs> Mr. Jacobs, Mr. Roshenbach, uh, and others that uh, uh, came together with uh, uh, Testament Construction, and I think ironed out. Um, a very difficult project to 
come to a, a conclusion in an amiable position where uh, we get completed ball fills and the contractor is awarded his days by the contract. So that was a very, again, arduous, tough uh, process that they've gone through over the last three or four months. And I think that you know, Mr. Jacobs laughing, I mean, it was really, really tough. And uh, I wanna thank them all for coming to the table and getting this ironed out. It, it does nothing but benefit the people of Bossier City, especially the children, so. And I'll, I'll just add, this puts the substantial completion date, I'll let Mr. Rauschenbach correct me if I get this wrong, at November 18th of this year. We have events that are scheduled to start. Um, we have contracts in place with various tournament groups. I think Coach Bohannon can speak to that. Um, travel baseball, travel sports, travel soccer that begin in February of 2022. And so the, the focus on here was um, getting this project has been a long time in completion, but was getting it complete um, and in top shape so we don't start 2022 by calling um, uh, customers, so to speak, and having to give their money back because we can't provide adequate facilities. Uh, Mr. President, I, I do uh, congratulate the team that got this deal worked out. I, I, I had concerns initially of this contractor uh, coming to this council with any type of increase change order. And I know this is a uh, small amount, 25,000, but, but I, I guess I would like to know how did we get to that? What, what led to their uh, having their wish come true to get an increase on this contract? What, how, how, was that, how was that brokered? If Mr. Uh, Rosenbach could share that with me. Happy to share it with you, Councilman Thurby. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it wasn't a, a brokerage of, okay, you get more money for more time. What we're doing is reconciling work that was approved via work change directive for various odds and ends that were occurring until such time that we got the time reconciled, mm -hmm. which has been months, mm -hmm. um, six, seven months we've been working on this. So. Um, these would be unforeseen conditions out on the property as well as additional items that Parks and Rec felt like they needed in order to ensure that everything they wanted out on those fields was there. So there, that, trust me, that's not all that has been requested. Um, you know, since we've gone through this, my charge has been and I, you know, I'd like to say that Testament's provided very reasonable um, pricing for some of the additional items we wanted. We're just trying to make sure that the objective is mid-November. The objective is mid-November, and until such point that we're confident we're open mid-November, we're not approving any more work. We do still have some ongoing things with keys for the building and you know some other miscellaneous items, but. The, the money is not specifically for time, it's for items that we've added to the okay. contract based on needs that we've observed out in the field. Okay, and I, I feel more comfortable with that, yeah. that the city has extended their punch list so they can get things done, not the other way around. Correct. Okay. And we're well, there beating on it every day, and I, much like Councilman Montgomery said, I would commend Parks and Rec because they have been um, battling this project now for, okay. for a long time. So. Okay, well, great job guys, thank, thank you. Any other questions? Uh, no, my questions were answered by all the other questions. So I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Any other questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. 
Introduce an ordinance to appropriate funds to cover design and construction costs for drainage improvements along Full of Love Drive for a total of $125,000 to come from Fund 400 Sales Tax Capital Improvement Fund. First reading. So moved. Second. <laughs> Council, any questions? Have any questions from the audience? Please cast your vote. Motion carries. Adopt a resolution authorizing the hiring of one GIS coordinator in the engineering department due to resignation. First and final reading. So moved. Second. Any questions, Council? Any questions from the audience? Please cast your vote. There it goes. Motion carries. Adopt a resolution certifying off system bridge program compliance for 2021 through 2022 for the Bossier City for the city of Bossier City, Louisiana. First and final reading. So moved. Second. Any questions, Council? Any questions from the audience? Please cast your vote. Motion carries. Adopt a resolution authorizing the hiring or promotion of a recreation maintenance worker to and backfill in any position this may, may create for parks and recreation. First and final reading. So moved. Second. Any questions, Council? Any questions from the audience? Please cast your vote. Motion carries. Adopt a resolution authorizing the hiring of one police officer for the Bossier City Police Department. First and final reading. So moved. Second. <laughs> Council, any questions? Questions from the audience? Please cast your vote. Motion carries. Adopt a resolution authorizing the promotion of one permit tech to office manager and replacing one permit tech due to retirement and permits. So moved. Second. Any questions, Council? Questions from the audience? Please cast your vote. Motion carries. Adopt a resolution adopting the City of Bossier City's current investment policy. First and final reading. So moved. Second. Council, any questions? Questions from the audience? Please cast your vote. Motion carries. Adopt a resolution authorizing Amanda Nottingham in her capacity of Chief Administrative Officer to sign any and all forms and correspondence on behalf of the City of Bossier City related to the Highway 71 street lighting, Bossier City facility planning control project, Number 50-M29-15-02, first and final reading. So moved. Second. Any questions, Council? Questions from the audience? Please cast your vote. Motion carries. A public hearing concerning the City of Bossier City's 2022 CDBG Annual Action Plan for Community Development Block Grant Funds. Good afternoon, Council. Good afternoon. Uh, this is our annual plan. Most of you have seen these come by before. Uh, for some of the new members, I don't know if I've covered the fact that we don't really have to compete for this these funds. We uh, we're an entitlement city, so we, we're going to get some of the money. It's appropriated first by Congress, and then uh, they're by formula that they have in the law. They divide up the money, and we get what we're going to get, what they're going to give us. Um, this particular year, I gave you a, a, a print out of the rough draft of the, the uh, annual action plan. The first page in there is a list of the projects, which is really what the annual action plan is all about the projects that we're going to do with the with the funds. 
we always apply for the amount of money that we got the year before because we don't know yet. Congress really hadn't appropriated any money yet. So once they appropriate, that's when they divide it up. And we know what we get next time. And we'll change the line items based on a percentage of change at that time. And most of the projects are the same that we have. They're, most of them are housing rehabilitation type projects. We do have a little neighborhood park improvement, a small project. And then all the sub recipients that do public services. Okay, this yeah. is a public hearing, so do we have anybody in the audience like to ask any questions or? I will close the public hearing. Adopt a resolution supporting the city's application to the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development for funding under entitlement status under authority of Title I of the Housing and Community Development Act of 1974, 42 U.S.C. 3535D, and 42 U.S.C. 5301 at Squire, first and final reading. So moved. <clears throat> Second. Second. Council, any questions? Any questions from the audience? Please cast your vote. Motion carries. Adopt a resolution authorizing Thomas H. Chandler to execute the attached alcoholic beverage concession contract between Bossier City Civic Center and Thrifty Liquor, first and final reading, and this is just that 90-day temporary. So moved. Second. Questions, Council? Questions from the audience? Please cast your vote. Motion carries. All right, we got a uh, monthly finance report from Ms. Angela Williamson, our finance director. Good afternoon, Council. We have before you the financials for the month ended September 30th, 2021. Page one is the revenue by fund report. The city's currently running 20% over budget. Gaming revenue dropped 17% during September, but is still doing better than it did prior year. Sales tax is doing well, up 11.2% compared to September 2020. The alternative fuel station revenue for September 2021 decreased significantly compared to September 2020. This is due to the city receiving two years of IRS CNG rebates for 2018 and 2019, totaling approximately 262,000 in September of 2020. Page two is the expenses by fund report. The city is currently running 6% under budget. The alternative fuel stations are notably over budget, but the revenue is at, as well at 135%. Page three is the sales tax comparative report. As noted previously, sales tax revenue is up 11.2% compared to September 2020. Page four is the Manning report. The city has four less employees than last month. The total employees as of September 30th, 2021 is 675. This is 37 employees below the budgeted total of 694. Page five is the water and sewer utility report. Net operating income after debt service for September 2021 is 83% of what it was for September 2020, which is a 17% decrease compared to September 2020. Current year to date net operating income is also 83% of what it was for the same period prior year, which is a 17% decrease as well. And it's 83% of the budget, which is 17% under budget. On a rolling 12-month basis, the current net operating income after debt service is 69% of the prior 12-month period, or down 31%. Are there any questions? Council, any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Engineering.
afternoon, Council. We'll run through our monthly engineering report real quick, give an update on all the projects going on. We're still chugging along at about $136 million of ongoing either design or construction projects. About 131 of that is actually in construction. Uh, we got nine that are in the design or bid phase, 19 under construction, and seven subdivisions that are in or nearing the completion or in the construction phase. Carriageway phase one, still at the same point we were at last week, still waiting on delivery of one item. <coughs> so let's push that stuff back. I believe they've actually taken delivery of one piece of the equipment. We're just waiting on one more. Coleman Street, you can see they have now tore up the world out there by Bossier High School. Uh, spoke to DOT today. They've got 34 working days remaining in their contract. That is a working day contract, not a calendar day contract. And uh, they are adamant that the contractor will complete it in that time frame. Uh, I believe they're looking at somewhere in December, uh, but I think they're going to beat that. Do you believe that? Uh, they're rocking and rolling. We ran into some issues at the intersection of McCormick and Coleman with some unknown utility conflicts, and we got all that addressed coordinated with DOT and the contractor. And now there, you can see right there on the left, that is a, a storm drain box. They've laid all the underground drainage this way. Yeah, and so, I've been out there. Was, and so now all they got lack is uh, getting the base done, curb and gutter, laying some asphalt, and we'll be done out of there. Thinsley, uh, this is actually the ADA field. Uh, this is that rubberized track surface. Uh, we don't have the lines on it yet, but they, it does look really, really good. Uh, interesting construction process. They actually lay that by hand. They actually hand trowel that entire surface. Um, and then obviously we had a uh, change order number six was y'all introduced that ordinance today. And we're looking at November 18th as a substantial completion. LTRI building, they're chugging along on that. They actually made, made up for some lost time last month. Uh, they gained about 10 to 15 days, uh, sitting at 49% complete with 64% of their time elapsed. East Bank Fire Station, uh, they're getting ready to pour all the uh, slab for the, all the concrete for the slab, getting those footings poured, and they'll be coming up out of the ground, getting ready <coughs> to start doing form work and stuff like that. Cliff Longman Park restrooms, you can see we got the iron in that we've been waiting on. Uh, they ran into a couple of issues trying to get that installed, uh, put them behind a little bit, but they're, now that we got all those issues done, they're rock and rolling, getting that one finished as well. Citywide street improvements along with the sidewalks. Uh, we completed phase one, still working on phase two, three, and four. Uh, met with the contractor today, proof rolled the noise street, uh, got a couple areas to patch, and then they'll get ready to install some asphalt on Benoist. And we've uh, also completed North Park and Mayfair, and then Edgemont will be coming up here shortly. And then we're also working on Michael Street in phase three. The sidewalks, they've now wrapped up in Green Acres. We're supposed to meet with the contractor next week to come up with a new list of where for them to go next. Private development. You see, we got a lot of subdivisions going on. Uh, these two pictures of, are the preserve and the village of Tiburon Unit 15. Uh, <coughs> a lot of the developers taking advantage of the dry weather we've had the past couple of months. Projects out to bid are in the design phase. Highway 71 lighting phase two. Uh, got with the designer last week. They are submitting plans to DOTD to have that project permitted, and once we have the permit in hand, we'll get that advertised and get that out to bids. Uh, South Bossier Miscellaneous Capital Improvements, that is currently being done. The contractor is working on mobilization and getting out there and getting degrass started, getting ready for that project. Uh, Highway 71 turn lanes at Golden Meadows, that's still in the early stage of design, along with uh, the Tinsley drainage basin improvements, the City Hall parking lot expansion and the next two drainage improvements as well. Traffic engineering, urban systems. Uh, we spoke with urban systems uh, late last week. They provided a schedule on how they're going to start this new phase of collecting data. 
I believe they've already started collecting data along Barksdale Boulevard. And then once they're done with that, they'll move to the other uh, corridors trying to get all that data before they try to finalize that study. Uh, still coordinating with the police jury as well as DOTD to the left turn lane extensions at 220 and LA3. Uh, believe they're looking at getting that project advertised once they have a DOTD permit in hand. And we're also still working on getting new traffic signalization software upgrades in our traffic engineering department. And as always, property standards are blowing and going. Any questions? Thank you, Brad. Thank you. Council, do you have any announcements? Anyone? All right. Meeting adjourned.